Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some really intriguing discoveries about supermassive black holes, the giant black holes in centers of various galaxies. With the major discovery in this case being some kind of a supermassive black hole that seems to have escaped from another galaxy and seems to be leaving behind a very unusual mark you see right here as it's flying through the intergalactic space, representing a rogue supermassive black hole, or I guess a runaway black hole but a really, really massive one. But also discuss some other discoveries made by Chandra Telescope, for example, the objects known as X-Bongs, and the discoveries in regards to why black holes seem to flicker, or why they twinkle like little stars. Because in the last few months, the scientists did make quite a few discoveries in regards to various supermassive black holes. But as you might also know, I've been running a fundraiser for almost a year now, and it's about to come to an end really soon. And so I actually managed to convince my friend, a science fiction writer, Peter Caudron, to donate to the cause if you, wonderful person, go and buy his book. This book, The Tempest, that actually features a super intriguing story involving a generation ship traveling through space and the experience that some of the pilots of the spaceship go through as they accidentally encounter a supermassive black hole. With this kind of scary picture spoiling some of the things that might happen. Anyway, the book is actually really interesting and if you're into sci-fi, it's kind of worth buying, mostly because apart from being interesting, it also is going to support the charity. So do consider purchasing this in the description below. But anyway, let's start with the first discovery. So as you probably know by now, the majority of relatively large galaxies will usually have a massive black hole in the center. For example, the Sagittarius A star in the middle of the Milky Way is approximately 4.3 million solar masses. Although in this case, it's actually on a smaller side. The majority of black holes out there seem to usually have a mass of hundreds of million or even billions of solar masses. Although even today it's not entirely clear how some of these more massive black holes were actually formed. But it's always been assumed that it's maybe because of the galactic collisions. Because essentially as galaxies interact, eventually some of the black holes on the inside will also collide creating more massive objects. But the galactic interaction does not always result in the collision of black holes. And to be more exact when it comes to collisions of supermassive black holes, there is also a very important, somewhat relevant paradox known as the final parsec problem. You can learn more about this in the description. Nevertheless, in the last few years, the scientists have discovered several supermassive black holes clearly orbiting around one another, although very often very far away from each other, so not really that close. And so even though they might combine creating a larger black hole, some of them might instead get kicked out. And this is based on the gravitational interaction and the so-called three-body problem. The problem that suggests that it's practically impossible to accurately predict the orbits of three bodies. And so when there are two black holes and potentially some other massive body, such as the galaxy itself, the final orbits of these objects are going to be extremely hectic and very unpredictable, with at least one of these objects potentially getting kicked out. And so the existence of these lonely black holes kicked out from various galaxies has always been predicted. But finding them is of course a different story. And that's mostly because, well, as the name implies, they're going to be very difficult to see. They are black holes after all. And as a matter of fact, there are really three ways we can potentially find them. One way is actually related to this recent discovery from Chandra, the unusual observations of objects that we refer to as X-bongs. It's a pretty funny name, but it's basically because they seem to emit an unusual amount of X-rays. X-Bong in this case stands for X-ray Bright Optically Normal Galaxy. Or basically a galaxy that appears pretty normal from the outside if observing with for example Hubble telescope, but then becoming extremely bright in the X-rays. Most likely because of an extremely thick layer surrounding the central black hole. Very likely resembling something like this. An extremely thick torus of matter orbiting around the central black hole creating extremely powerful emissions, but also creating very hot temperatures, which result in the X-rays we're observing. With the gas in this case also blocking most of the light in the optical wavelengths, but allowing the X-rays to pass through. And so approximately 800 of these X-bongs were discovered in various galaxies, representing one of the ways we can find black holes. We essentially expect them to have very powerful emissions based on the amount of gas and material around them. In a relevant study that was released not so long ago, using a very similar technique but a different telescope, Erosita, the scientists were able to find an extremely luminous black hole, in this case what's known as a quasar, emitting very powerful X-rays when the universe was only 800 million years old. 
In this case, this is an extremely rare object. Only 50 of these are known so far. And they're rare because they're so far away that it's practically impossible to see them. But this object is so bright that it produces way more x-rays than expected. It actually might be one of the brightest objects seen so far. But intriguingly, the black hole in this case is not as big as some of the other ones. It's only about 250 million solar masses. That is relatively small for a black hole that's producing so much energy. And so it means that it's probably just a very voracious eater. It's absorbing a huge amount of matter, a huge amount of mass, a huge amount of gas, all at the same time. And as a result, it produces a lot more luminosity and brightness than should be possible from a black hole of this size. Theoretically, these are referred to as the Super Eddington Limit black holes. They've never really been seen, but this could be the first candidate. In this case, it's essentially a black hole that's producing a lot more luminosity and a lot more brightness than is expected of a black hole of this size. And most likely because, for some reason, it just has a lot of stuff to eat around it. But anyway, the point is that some black holes should be pretty easily visible even from extremely far away distances, assuming they do have something to eat which would not be the case for a black hole kicked out of a galaxy millions of years ago. If this black hole was traveling completely by itself, it's a lot more likely to look something like this, producing almost no radiation at all and only producing gravitational landing effects, which of course means that detecting this object would be still extremely difficult. But there are other ways. A black hole kicked out from the center of a galaxy might also steal some of the stars along with it and even create a kind of a chain or a kind of a tail that follows along the path of the black hole escaping from the galaxy. But unfortunately, this sort of has a distance limitation. It would be very difficult to see this particular tail of stars from very far away distances. Anything beyond 100 million light years is almost impossible to detect. So it would only work for black holes within the vicinity of the Milky Way. At the moment, no such signs were detected. And then there's another way. And this is actually based on the effect that the black hole should be producing as it travels through the interstellar gas. By interacting with intergalactic medium, the pressure from the black hole can lead to the formation of stars because of various shock waves that it creates as it travels between galaxies. Or basically, as it travels along a straight line, we expect new stars to form along this line as well. Which is, to some extent, exactly what you're looking at right here. The scientists discovered an unusual line of young stars, some of them younger than 30 million years old, with the youngest stars appearing near what seems to be some kind of a wake from an object traveling across. With this zoomed in image showing three separate knots, K1, K2 and K3, which seem to be three new stars. And the properties of these stars, specifically their age and their metallicity, suggest that they're about 39 million years old. Extremely young for something to be formed inside a galaxy, but also more surprisingly, positioned along a line. And when the scientists analyzed a nearby galaxy where all of this might have come from, they discovered that the galaxy seemed to be somewhat irregular, something that's usually expected of a galaxy that's just gone through a recent merger, presenting us with quite a lot of signs that this is maybe exactly what's happening, an escaped black hole from a recent galactic merger. And further analysis determined that points A and B that you see right here are very likely the best points where we could potentially find this black hole. In other words, we'd have to use other telescopes with possibly other frequencies to actually see if there's anything else going on here with emissions indicating that there's a black hole hiding within. Because at the moment, it's really just the path that we see right here that suggests that something happened. And that's because in theory, you could explain all of this without using the black hole. This could also have come from something else. For example, it could have come from an extremely powerful astrophysical jet created by the black hole itself. This is the jet from the iconic M87 black hole whose image was taken a few years ago. And so at least in theory, a very powerful jet coming from the central black hole from within the galaxy could have maybe created these stars as well. Because in some cases these jets can also cause the shock waves resulting in the star formation. But the scientists in the paper argue that this shape is a little bit too straight and a little bit too perfect to be a result of a jet and not a traveling black hole. Basically, they still think it's most likely a black hole hiding within. And the only way to prove this is to directly observe other effects that we expect from black holes. But because it's unlikely to be too bright or produce a lot of other emissions, this is going to be a pretty difficult job. Nevertheless, there might be some features we can be looking for in order to discover this black hole. And it's actually from another paper that was released not so long ago. Most black holes that emit any energy 
also tend to twinkle. They essentially change in brightness that changes from day to day. So this is actually something we can detect with modern telescopes. And up until recently, it wasn't entirely clear why they do so. But by studying very powerful quasars that twinkle even more than other quasars, such as this one right here, the quasar discovered to consume an entire solar mass every two days, the scientists were able to discover a relationship between the accretion disk around the quasar and the frequency of twinkles. This idea is known as magnetorotational instability, and it basically presents the black hole accretion disk as a series of magnetic disks surrounded by various coils that produce extremely powerful magnetic fields with instabilities on the inside. And because the larger disks generally orbit much slower, they also produce much slower twinkles, whereas the faster and tighter orbits produce a lot more twinkling as well, with the magnetic fields created by the accretion disk essentially causing a lot of turbulence inside the disk itself, which then ends up creating a lot of differences in brightness visible as twinkling from the outside. Maybe something similar to what you see right here, although way, way more extreme and a little bit more active. And so in essence, by observing this particular area where we believe the black hole to exist, and by maybe detecting certain twinkles or unusual changes of brightness somewhere along this line, it might be possible to determine if there's a black hole here after all. Because at the moment, this is really the only sign we have that there is something here traveling across space, creating new stars for one reason or another. But that's of course just one explanation. There could be some other explanations to what exactly this unusual line is. I mean, we know it's made out of stars, but what created these stars is uncertain, making this a pretty cool discovery, along with other discoveries about supermassive black holes. But that's of course just some discoveries that were made in the last few months. And if you'd like to learn more about various black hole discoveries from, for example, last year, check out some of the previous videos in the description. But we'll definitely be coming back to this as the scientists figure out what's going on here. And so on that note, consider supporting the children charity by possibly purchasing this book, and by also checking out some other works by Peter Caudron, apparently an international best-selling author. And alternatively, you can also support this channel and support the charity by joining a channel membership, joining the Patreon, or buying one of the wonderful person t-shirts in the description below. All of the money currently is going to one of these charities. Either way, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. Hey look, the t-shirt has a black hole too.